stop the search, call Mike Burge or visit MikeBurgeFord.com. This is Andrew Kinnear here at Mike Burge Ford. We have the car, truck, or SUV to meet all your needs. We have new vehicles marked down to rock bottom prices, so if that don't make you holler, our top dollar on your trade wheel. As always, stop the search. 5x5 five by five to 10x25. They also have outside covered and uncovered spaces available for vehicles, boats, trailers, and RVs. Jessup Premium Storage on the Waycross Highway in Jessup. All right, it's just about 8 o'clock. You're listening to The Big Dog, W-I-F-O-F-M in Jessup, 105.5 in your FM dial. Bud Shepard here with you along with Bob Morgan on this Wednesday morning, the 30th day of May. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear, by Jessup Premium Stores, located out here on the Waycross Highway, and also brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, located downtown Jessup. Bob, we've got a couple of special ladies in here with us this morning. Yeah, talking chamber legacy dinner. Hallie Graham's in here. Lady Papa John's in here. So, Hallie, you don't here. get offended by becoming a lady. Sometimes people you know, your age say, no, I'm not. I'm too old to be, I'm too young to be called a lady. No, no offense at no all. No offense at all. No Good. offense at all. <laughs> Good morning. Um, we're here to talk about the Legacy Dinner coming up June 28th at 7 p.m. This will be the sixth annual Legacy Dinner, and our presenting sponsor this year is Papa John's. So we are excited they're in town now and that they're on board to um, present our Legacy Dinner. Tickets are on sale now. You can stop by the chamber and pick those up. They're $75 for members and 100 for non-members. Those will be on sale until the week before. I think it's like June 15th or something. They'll be on sale till. So stop by and pick those up. Also, if you haven't got your nominations in for the award winners, please do that. You have until June 1st, which is this Friday. You can stop by and, again, the chamber and talk with Lisa about getting those forms um, and getting them turned in so you, we can have those award winners that night. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Dawn and let her talk a little bit about Papa John's being in town. All right. Good morning, Dawn. Oh, okay, let me get your mic on. Say good morning again. Good morning. All right. Now, y'all, you and your husband and, and, and Chris have gone in together and have um, got the franchise for Papa John's Pizza, didn't you? Yes, sir. We. It's um, a, a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't even know this was coming. It was out of the blue and all. But for us, it's been several months oh, you yes. know, in the making. It's right. Been, and y'all donors of uh, Cafe Euro, of course, and now you've stepped out into the pizza business. Tell a little bit about why you decide to bring uh, a Papa John's franchise to Jessup and where you're located and, you know, just things about your business? Um, well, my husband loves pizza. <laughs> um, um, and he had always, we'd always... Well, I love pizza, too, but I didn't open franchise. <laughs> um, we, but you're in the restaurant business yeah, anyway, so... Yeah, we'd always... Uh, he'd always joked slash dreamed about opening, you know, a Papa John's one day, and we had looked into the, the franchise, and... Um, and um, we mentioned it to our business partner, Chris, and, and he had some experience with um, some of his former business partners having owned some. And right. so he, he knew what it looked like. And, and as well, the, the, the franchise, they really um, they embody what we've always tried to embody with the cafe. And that was, um, you know, better ingredients, better pizza. And, and we've always believed the cafe that, you know, the better products you know, that you use, better ingredients, you right. use the best product you can give to the customer. Right. And, and it, um, and we have learned through this process it really is a family with the Papa John's uh, brand, and um, we're proud and happy to be a part of that family now. All right, tell folks where uh, Papa John's and Jessup's located, your hours, that kind of good stuff. We are located at 410 West Cherry Street, which is in the Pickley Weekly Plaza. We're on the end cap, so we do have a drive through So with all this bad weather, if you were yeah, in town yeah, and wanted to swing by, you can come through the drive through uh, We... Monday through Thursday, our hours are 10 to 11. Uh, Friday and Saturday, our hours are 10 to midnight. And then on Sunday, our hours are 11 to 10. And you do have delivery, is that correct? Yes, we do have delivery. Uh, we don't yet deliver to all of Wayne County, but we deliver to most of Wayne County. Uh, we you know, wanted to, to kind of start small and then be able to expand rather than disappoint some people. Um, we are, you know, learning... Still, I didn't know there was anybody that delivered all to Wayne County anyway. That's that's quite a long ways to drive. It is a long way to drive. Um, you know, uh, Papa Good John's. County. Yes, Papa John's motto is to ha for you to have your pizza in 35 minutes or less from the moment you order it. And so they <laughs> <laughs> um, they encourage us to have like a, a 12 minute drive time. And so it makes it, you know, we, we pushed it some places uh -huh. um, because, you know, we wanted to try and serve as many people as possible. Okay. And uh, Papa John's, uh, does it offer just pizza or do you have other uh, entrees that folks can order? Uh, we have pizza. We offer wings. 
uh, and chicken poppers, as well as breadsticks, garlic lunch cheese sticks, and um, desserts. And I think it's okay to say at this point, because we know, but we will be launching with by the end of the year sandwiches. Okay, and uh, that's something that uh, Papa John's um, uh, National is working on, right? Yes, it is already launched in a few markets, and then um, so, sometime by October, I'm pretty sure we'll be doing them. Also, Friday is National Donut Day, and we are launching a new dessert. We're launching donut holes, and for every person that orders a pizza online, you get a free order of donut holes on Friday. Well, what are you doing with the rest of the donuts? Well, I mean, well, I mean, you only got the hole. What's, what about <laughs> around it? What, what are y'all going to do with that? They, they haven't let me know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Don in here uh, from um, from Papa John's new restaurant here in town, located uh, in there in the Piglet between the shopping center, all the way to the right. Uh, go check them out. And they are the presenting sponsor. That's the reason why she's here this morning. They are the presenting sponsor for the Legacy Dinner coming up with the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. And once again, Ellie, what, on what date? Um, June 28th at 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, I've got a few other sponsors I'm going to go put right down. In. Some Southern Posh Wedding and Events, Pine Forest Country Club, and Showcase Publications. Uh, I'd also like to announce our committee and recognize them because without them we wouldn't be able to have the Legacy Dinner put on and how wonderful it is. So Stephanie Carter, Candy Harris, Donnie Ray, Sharon Corson, Austin Brake, Candace McKinley, Lisa Massey, and Justin Franks. And again, without them... This event would not be possible, and without our sponsors, it would not be possible either. So we thank all of them for their hard work and their um, donations to this event. All right. Say where the event's at. It's at Pine Forest okay. Country Club. Yeah, Pine Forest <laughs> I Country Club. I thought I said Club. that, but I may have forgot. That's yes, where it so. was last year. Tell us what goes on at the Legacy Dinner. Of course, everybody knows, you know, Taste of Wayne. It's more of a casual affair. Uh, tell us about the Legacy Dinner and the uh, the function of it. Okay. This is um, the end event for the Chamber calendar year per se so the calendar year ends and then july um it First will kick off it, yeah. yeah it will start off the new year for 18 19 years so this kind of puts a cap on everything throughout the year we give out the awards at this banquet for distinguished service award business leader of the year small business of the year um, ambassador of the year so all those awards are given and then also it's the changing of the chairman so Jeff Chandler will be closing up his year as um, chairman for the chamber, and Jody Ammons will be coming in. So they did the passing of the um, gavel as well. And then it's just a nice evening to, like, recap throughout the year with, you know, other businesses, chamber members, um, and reflect on the past year of the chamber and how they've grown and the events that we've put on. So it's a really nice event that the chamber puts on, a little more um, – elegant than it's other a events, formal, a little yeah. more formal than the Taste of Wayne or the Christmas Parade or uh, and the other events that go on throughout the year. Okay. And uh, tickets are available now, is that correct? They are at, at, the, chamber at the Chamber $75 for members and 100 for non-members. That's per person? Yes, per person. And you, but you get a, the, the meal is something else. Yes, we normally have prime rib, fried shrimp, all the fixings, dessert. The Country Club um, does an outstanding job with the meal. The setup, everything they help us do, it's always fantastic. So I do want to say that seats are limited, so be yeah. sure to get by there as soon as possible because they will sell out the closer you wait to the event. So go on by there okay. now, call Lisa at the Chamber, and have her reserve those seats for you if you want some tickets. All right, and this is the premier event for the Chamber uh, during the course of the year, the last of, um, event, like you said, of the, of the, um, the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And so it would be great if all members and even non-members they want to go that can, can go. But tickets are $75 for members, and they're available there at the uh, Chamber. Exactly. Okay. Anything else about it? No, I sure. think that's all we have. We're it, excited. We're, you know, just... A couple of weeks away now, so go get your ticket, and we're really excited that Papa John's is on board and our presenting sponsor this year. Okay. Bob, any other questions? Well, Comments, Bob? Well, just how I said you're looking for nominations for the awards, so talk about that again, because people ask all the time how people win these awards, so they are by nominations in the committee, so if somebody wants to nominate somebody for one of those awards, how do they go about doing that? Yes, they can go by the chamber and pick up a nomination form or call Lisa, and she can email you one of those. Um, they are all by nomination. So once your nominations are turned in, then they go through the selection committee and they figure out who they think is best for that you know, position and go through their roles of that. Um, nominations are due by this Friday, June 1st. So you've got two days to get those turned in um, before the deadline's turned off. So it is for the public to nominate somebody. Mm -hmm. And they go by what nominations they get turned in by 
selection of winners. So. Those award winners. Traditionally now we're in the Christmas parade, so. You know. Yes, they are. That is a, a perk to winning the award. You get to ride in the Christmas parade. And so if people want to nominate folks for these different uh, um, uh, awards, which, what categories can folks, um, once again, nominate folks for? Well, there's a form for each um, award other than um, distinguished, and I'm sorry, ag excellent in agriculture mm -hmm. that, that you can nominate, and then ambassador of the year, that's some voted, voted by the ambassadors. So distinguished the service, okay, go ahead. Um, business leader of the year, and small business um, of the year. Those three you can nominate. Those, there's an individual form for each. Um, okay. And folks can get those forms there from the chamber. Of course, you can always go to the chamber's um, uh, website. The best thing to do if you can is go by and get those forms and nominate someone in one of those categories that you think is deserving. Exactly. And the committee will get together and look over it and and, um, and select the the person, the winner. Okay. Anything else? No, I think that's that it? it. Thank you for having Commerce us on. Legacy dinner coming up on what date again? June 28th at June 7 p.m. And is that a Thursday night? That is a Thursday night. It's usually Thursday night. And Dom, appreciate you coming in this morning and talking about the new Papa John's here in town and being the presenting sponsor of the Legacy Dinner. Thank you for having us. Okay. All right. We'll be back with more, more of the world famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. WIFOFM Big Dog Country Cash Can. Imagine, if you will, a specially marked can hidden in Wayne County, Georgia, worth $1,055. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, find the cash can. Clues to the can's location will be read Monday through Friday live on WIFO at 7:10 a.m., 12:50 p.m., 3:03 p.m., and 5:50 p.m. Shortly after 5 p.m. on Friday, the clues will be posted online at BigDogCountry.com. No purchase necessary. You must be 18 to claim the prize. Complete rules online at BigDogCountry.com. This promo will self destroy 105.5 FM in Jess of Big Dog Country Radio. The time now is 8.11. It is a Wednesday morning, the 30th day of May. And Bob, how are you doing? I'm good. Okay. People always ask me all the time, how's Bob doing? How's Bob doing? And I say, well, he's recovering real well. Doing what the doctors tell me to do. You got, got them staples out? Got the staples out, yeah. Yeah, got to go back and see him on the 14th of June, so. Okay. Still some follow-ups. So. Oh, yeah, there's always follow-up in these kind of surgeries, so. Uh, but everything going along fine? You feeling good and doing well and all that kind of good stuff? Feeling yeah, pretty good. Okay. Back right. to working out, back to playing golf. Well, so. you are working out. Yep. So they don't worry that's going to hurt the stitches inside or anything? Apparently not. No, apparently not. Okay. I just Told me. didn't know what the doctor said. Doctor said so I go by what the doctor says. They, they know more than we do. So, um, oh, I'm glad that everybody's glad that you're doing well and, and bouncing back and, um, and um, just back in the saddle. All right? And uh, uh, graduation ceremonies on Friday night went real well, didn't it? Yeah, I'm glad they got in. I said the weather forecast was a big question, but they got in. Had nice weather. I said both the salutatorian and valedictorian we heard their speeches again this week. Both going to Georgia Tech. Both, Christine. both of them going to Georgia Tech. So the, the top... SAT and grade point average folks are going to Georgia Tech. Yep. Grand Lake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wish them well. Yeah, wish them well. But it was a good ceremony. I said, glad they got it in. I said, the weather forecast has been kind of crazy the last several weeks. Curious to have talked to the Georgia Board Office this week to find out about the catfish festival because the river's kind of high. I don't know how that affects fishing. Well, you just got to be more creative in trying to find the fish. You know, they moved it from, you know, like the second week in May until June because of hoping the river would drop down a little bit uh, uh, in June. But uh, we've just had about three weeks now uh, of, you know, really wet weather. And so it's at 9.1 feet and rising. And uh, so it's just, you're going to have to be a little more creative out there and work a little harder. The fish are still there. You're just going to have to... Use all your skills to be able to get them. They're not easier to catch when it's high. It's when they're low. When it's the river's high. low. It's pretty high river level. Yeah, high. yeah, it's, it's pretty high right now. Nine point one feet, and uh, it, it's still rising. So, um, uh, 
it'll be interesting to see exactly what it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to be this weekend. It'll probably be up to nine, something or another. Uh, but it's rising right now. And so we'll see how it goes. But uh, it starts, you said, at noon on Saturday. Sure. It goes to two on Sunday. Is that correct? Right. You have to weigh in. I said you can go in anywhere on the Altamont River, but you got to be in weigh in on Sunday at two o'clock. And remember now, they do. You do have to. Um, it's a nice first place prize, seventy five hundred dollar first place prize. Again, pay us for the prices to turn on the number of entries into the event. But I understand there's a lot of people entered into the event, so it should be a good payout for second, third, and fourth place. So I'm not sure how many places they pay, but again, hundred dollars entry into the tournament still can. Sign up the Tourism Board office. If you need more information, call the Tourism Board office at 427 3233. They got the website, waynetourism.com. And so, should be a big event. Okay. Well, Once let's again. look at the uh, the projection here for the river by uh, seas. June 2nd and 3rd, is that correct? 2nd yeah. and 3rd, it's going to be up to about 9.7, 9 9.8. Um, so, it's still going to be rising this week. So, it's going to be challenging, but not impossible. It's supposed to be up to 9.8 feet by Sunday, uh, about 9.7 on Saturday. So I went up there, but um, the river, the fish are still there. Just got to go find them, Bob. Josh said Leanne's going to be in it. So, well, you know, you know, her, 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 um, her, her boyfriend is a fisherman, so um, he's got some talent. So perhaps maybe he can help her catch that big one. She said yesterday she wants the first place prize. That's what she said. <laughs> Wish her well. Wish her well. Yeah. And uh, but it all starts and ends right down there at the, the JC Landing and Fairgrounds, right? All right. That's where the headquarters are. Okay. And if anybody wants to to enter or find out more about it, all you gotta do is just uh, go to the tourism website or go by the tourism office there in the old train depot. Um, on Broad Street in downtown Jessup. Those Sunday weigh-ins are fun to watch. They draw a big crowd. I do the same thing with the hog jam. Yeah. So, you know, people show up Sunday to watch everybody put the weigh-in. So. Yeah, and the, and the winners have to realize they are going to be hooked up to a polygraph, to, you know, because, you know, fishermen have been known to embellish their Tell stories. Tales. <laughs> so, they, they do try to make it as honest as possible. And so the winners will be hooked up to, to a polygraph with an expert there to make sure that uh, you did catch the fish there in the Audemars You did catch it during the hours that you're supposed to catch it. And, you know, you didn't catch it and have it in a tank at home for a week and, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, uh, I'm trying to make it, you know, fair and honest for everyone. But a lot of folks that enter, big old prize to be given away, a great event put on by the um, Wayne County uh, Tourism Board each and every single year. All right, NBA finals are coming up. Um, Golden State going to win it all again, or no doubt, no doubt. I hope they sweep personally. You do. Why do you hope they sweep? So I can't stand LeBron. You cannot stand LeBron. Why? Because he's the most insecure superstar I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he whines and complains <laughs> about everything. <laughs> Just a whiner. Yeah, you know, I heard one of the, uh, the the commentators on our AM station, Fox Sports Radio, 1370 AM, the Buzz WLOP, say that, um, you know, Cleveland's got a giant that helped them get there, but uh, Golden State has several titans, about three titans. So it's hard for one giant to be three titans. I'm mean, sad that Golden State's got three of the best players in the league on the same team, but it is what it is. But I don't see it being a close series of a four sweep. A sweep, you know. They say that if it was a one-game series, that perhaps maybe uh, LeBron could put the whole game on his back and do it. But he cannot do it for four games. No way. But most people are picking that they'll win one, perhaps two games, the max. A great player. You know, he goes down. He'll go down as one of the greatest players of all time. But I think they said this is eight NBA Finals. He's been eight, in a row eight, with eight, Miami eight, and now back uh, with Cleveland. Uh, eight straight Finals. Eight straight. It's nine Amazing. Finals. But he hasn't won them all. He's no, lost three. Won so. yeah. like I said, he, all these people want to compare him to Michael Jordan. There's no comparison. Michael Jordan, six titles, six MVPs, greatest player of all time, period. He's not even in his zip code. I'm sorry, it's just it's not even close. You don't think so? No. Yeah. It's kind of hard to compare 
I don't see people dancing. I want to be like LeBron. They always said, I want to be like Mike. So, <laughs> Everybody wants to be like Mike. We were talking about as if a day or somebody, they say, you know, if, what if Michael and Bird and Magic all decide they want to play on the same team and they all got together? I mean, they didn't, they didn't do that. They like to compete against one another. All these players now, they, they yeah, you know, that's, like, that's what I'm talking about. I got to go play with a superstar so I can win. I mean, it's just crazy. And then, yeah, they do talk about that, and they talk about, you know, I've heard them say that, you know, they, 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 they really have, they have respect for each other, but they weren't this, you know, after the game, go give a hug, that kind of stuff like you see today's players do. They you know them, you know, Boston didn't like L.A., L.A. didn't like Boston. It was a war when they played and things of that sort, and um, today the players are very friendly before and after the game. You know, it's not that, you know, deep-seated competitiveness against each other. Bird and Magic and Michael, they just played basketball. That's it. <laughs> they tried to get Michael Jordan to talk about politics and all that. He said, look, Republicans buy sneakers, too. <laughs> no one wants to hear my politics. Yeah. They come watch me play basketball. That's right. Yeah, leave the politics to the politicians, huh? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I'm, play, I'm playing, uh, playing a sport, and people don't need to hear all that from me. I hope to go to state warriors sweep. LeBron, hope he loses all four games, and then he can whine and moan and complain about his teammates not carrying the load. So, you know, the question is, fault besides if he, his. If, he, if he only wins one or two games or none at all and gets swept, does that give him more reason to go to another team? Or if he does happen to win, which I don't think they will, um, does that give him more reason to, to go to another team? You know? always talking about going to another team. Yeah, they got always. Them, they got him going to New York, they got him going to Los Angeles, got him wherever, you know. Why don't you just join Golden State? Make it. <laughs> <laughs> Where would they put them? They already got. <laughs> How would they pay them? You know, play with superstars. He does, you know. Yeah. But I just hope it's over quickly. I just we we're talking about this too. Basketball's got to be a, this. It's the stupidest sport I've ever seen. I mean, Why? You watch that Boston Cleveland series. How can you beat a team by twenty five points at one location? Then lose by 40 at the next location. Uh, home, home court advantage can mean. I, 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 that I, I don't know. series was absurd to watch. That's I why no you can't watch it. I mean, it's the same five guys against five. How can you lose by 20 at your place and win by 40 at your place? It yeah. makes, makes no sense. The home, home court advantage can't be that big an advantage. It's your superstar you, athletes. You see that with baseball. You know, you can have two baseball teams play each other. And, of course, I know you do have different pitchers are on the mound. How does an NBA player go out there and shoot 0 for 7 from the three-point line? 0 for 7. He's a professional. He's supposed to be. That's all he does for a living. Uh, he went it. 0 for 7. 0 for, the other guy was 0 for 9. It was, it was absurd. Uh, uh, I, can't, well, I can't watch a lot of NBA basketball. But I'm going for Golden State over LeBron. So I'm looking for a four-game sweep. Get it over with. Okay. Let LeBron go to his new team. All right. Somebody just texted in, Bob. Do you always text in questions or comments during the world-famous Butch and Bob show and other times that our regular business line is text-enabled at 912-427-3711, 427-3711. Somebody just texted in, MJ always had the referees on his side. <laughs> Side. Everybody liked Mike. Yeah, even the referees. <laughs> well, there was that one series where he made that final shot, and everybody in that doggone, everybody on television and there at the arena know he's pushed off that guy, backed up, and made that shot, but he wasn't called on it. He's been out of the league. How many years is Sneakers still one of the highest fates? You know, yeah. One of the highest Sydney Sneakers, Air Jordans. People love him, so. Yeah. I just can't understand these people trying to compare LeBron to Michael Jordan. I just don't, I don't see the comparison. Well, you know, they always try to compare different athletes to, to different athletes from different eras and stuff like that. I was listening to AM 1370's Fox Sports the other day. They said, they said it best, you have to win. You know, we judge people on winning. Mm -hmm. Like Jim Kelly was a great quarterback, but he's 0 for 4 in the Super Bowl. Right. So they don't consider him one of the greatest quarterbacks. So same thing with LeBron. He's been to the finals eight times. This is the ninth time. He's lost. He didn't win them all. Mm -hmm. He's lost three already. He loses this one. It'll be a fourth final he's lost. So how can you compare him as one of the greatest players ever? Mm -hmm. he's he's how does he won four? Is he won four he's won three. He's won three. He's won okay. three and lost four, I believe it is. Okay. Well, it's just not him. It's the entire team, Bob. Oh, yeah. they, they, so they put it on his back. I know. I know. It's always the superstars. 
It's his glory or his fault, one of the two. But, you know, someone like Golden State, you got three superstars there. And then when um, LeBron played down there in Miami, there was three there. Yeah. You know, it, the, it just shows you, uh, I'm changing subjects here, is the fact that, uh, you know, you had the, um, uh, the Roseanne, you know, Roseanne come back this year as a, as a TV show. I never watched it before. I haven't watched it now. Uh, but um, uh, the show's creator, Roseanne, uh, posted some twe uh, tweets on Twitter, of course, uh, that some people thought that uh, were racist and anti uh, some, uh, um, some Semitic? Is that how you say it? Semitic? Yeah. And, um, and because of those tweets, uh, there was a deluge of um, tweets against her, and um, the show's been canceled because she expressed her opinion on something or made a comment that people didn't like. And um, I heard um, a comedian, or actually I didn't hear, I read something about a comedian. And I cannot remember his name, but he's, he's, he's been around a long time. He's like in his 60s or something like that. And he's saying today's political correctness is making, um, uh, making it very difficult to have humor in this country and also uh, creativity because you, everybody's got to be so, they're so worried about what they say that um, because of uh, suddenly if you say one thing that people don't like, you've got these trolls on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and places like that and, uh, and all that social media that will just deluge and then some of these um, like Disney um, decided that oh we're going to cancel the show because of all these anti-Roseanne tweets because they didn't like what she said on her Twitter well, she admitted it was racist comments and yeah. she blamed it on Ambien so words do matter right. and ABC took action because everybody knows it's a racist comment that she tweeted so right. she's out right but that just shows you the, the so what you, you got to be careful, careful what, you, what you put on there. all the time, don't hit send. Yeah. I say it all the time. And that's what gets people in trouble. Yeah. Facebook, tweets, whatever. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't have you any social media. You can want, but don't hit send. Yeah, you don't have social media. I don't have social media. Permit were said a long time ago. Don't hit send. Don't hit send. And don't, you know, so many people uh, tweet stuff or put it on Facebook and Instagram and all that other social media stuff out there. In the like the the heat of the moment or the emotion of the moment or when like said on Ambien or when they're on you know maybe when they're you know uh, drunk or whatever the case may be, and the next thing you know once you hit that sin, it's out there and there's nothing you can do to bring it back. I never watched the show. I said, no, I've never watched it before or this I said, time. I still remember her trying to sing the national anthem. Oh, that, that was, was terrible. So, so. I can't believe they had her out there I'm trying to sing not, that thing. Not a, not a big Roseanne fan. So. No, I've never been a Roseanne fan. I'm not going to miss her. Yeah. I was really surprised with her, um, uh, with her views and so forth, and everybody knows Roseanne's views, that she had a character on Roseanne on a person that was very conservative, which is totally against opposite of what her regular views are. The sad thing is, must have been a popular show because 18 million people tuned in. Yeah, it was and very popular. People, people you feel sorry for the other people that are on the show and the writers and producers that had a job. Now they're out of a job. So yeah. that's just the way it is. All right. I said words do matter. The words do matter. Right. And so, don't ever say anything on, I mean, on social media that, you know. Don't hit sand. Don't hit sand. Yeah. Butch, uh, don't hit sin, tell that to Trump. <laughs> That's what somebody just texted in. Somebody just texted in, uh, don't hit sin, uh, and tell that to Trump. You know, you know, Trump's the first president that has actually used social media to get across to the public his views and comments on stuff. And some people like it and some people don't. I know the media doesn't like it because um, the national media doesn't like it because they don't have to use, he doesn't have to use them to get across his views, he can just put it out there and tweet it, and and just bypass them, and they can't, and, and they don't, they can't filter it per se, they can't edit it per se. It's right straight there to to the folks, and so um, the first president's really used uh, social media on a, almost a daily basis. He finally got good advice last night because he was speaking in Nashville, and they told him do not even mention Roseanne's name because he was bragging about how he's a big fan of Roseanne. And <laughs> in his ear last night said don't even mention her name well you know that's what folks you know everybody's a product of their environment who they've been around what they've done the entire life and you know uh, 
You know, Donald Trump's been a New Yorker, and we know how New Yorkers are. They're, they're, they're very opinionated. Sometimes they're in your face. Uh, they're, um, uh, they've got very strong views on stuff. They're not scared. Many New Yorkers are not scared to express those views and things of that sort. And so, you know, Donald's, uh, 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 President Trump is a, um, a product of that environment. Plus, he's been a very successful businessman. And to be that, you've got to be a little forceful, overbearing in a sense. Not, I wouldn't say overbearing, but you've got to be, um, um, you've got to be very opinionated and believe in what you say and move forward with that. And he's using those experiences to be president. And, and, and you know, we're used to presidents being more um, political. You know, be a little more safe in what they say, uh, trying to weigh the options, you know, uh, putting up a balloon and seeing which way the, the political winds are going for that day. We're just not used to a president just saying what he says and, you know, and, and doing that. But it's, it's because of um, he really wasn't a politician. He was a businessman in New York City. And so uh, I think he's living and learning all that. You don't see as much as you did before, but um, still. If he's got an opinion he wants to express, he's going to do it. Some people like it and some people don't. All right, and um, we're about out of time. Anything else in your mind this morning, Bob? I'm just looking forward to the girls' softball and the Super Regional Baseball tournaments get underway this weekend. So the rest of Athens hosting the baseball and the girls' softball team in Oklahoma City take on Florida tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. First game. Should be fun. Should be fun. All right, Bob, have a good day. World-famous Butcher Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup.